Shalom, and welcome to Darche Choshech, Pathways of Darkness, a linguistic analysis of the wrong ways of Proverbs. Today we're going to talk about the word which is uh, translated as iniquity. Actually, there are two words which are consistently translated as iniquity, and they are cognates. The first of these is avon with an ayin. When there is iniquity, punishment comes with it. Genesis 4.13 And Cain said unto Yahweh, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Genesis 19.15 And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. So we know the sins of both Cain and the city, the sins of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, these sins are considered to be iniquity. Exodus 25 Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So we see... And I think this is indicated by the nun, the letter nun being the last letter. The letter nun indicates something that continues on from generation to generation. And here we see that this iniquity can be uh, spiritually inherited from generation to generation. 1 Samuel 3.14 And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. We know the sins of Eli's sons, and they continued in their sin. Their father did not rebuke them. There is no way that Yahweh God is willing to cover the, their sin or atone for their sin or purge their sin. They're going to be cut off because of their continuous pattern of bad behavior. 2 Samuel 24.10 And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto Yahweh, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Yahweh, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. David looked upon his own heart, and he realized that there was a perverseness in his heart. He was going the wrong way. And he asks that Yahweh take that away, that that he um, atoned for that sin, and that is what was required in the case of iniquity. Isaiah 1 4 Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken Yahweh, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backward. Daniel 9.24 Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. We've already talked about transgression. We've already talked about sin. And now we're talking about iniquity. There's a progression in these uh, things and what requires reconciliation, what requires the atonement completely on the part of Yahweh, is the iniquity. The word avon comes from a root ava, which means to commit iniquity or to be perverse, as we will see. Second Samuel 19.19 19. And said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, Neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. This is a story of Shimei, or Shimei as it is said in English, um, who was uh, cursing and throwing rocks at the king David as he left the city, abandoning the city when, uh, in, during the rebellion of Absalom. 
And so now Absalom is dead and David is coming back. And Shimei feels uh, pretty much like he's in a dangerous position. Uh, when he was leaving, they suggested to David that uh, they ought to do something about this guy cursing at him. And he said, you know, maybe, maybe the Lord is commanding him to give the cursing. And even when David came back, he said, no, I'm not going to do anything against Shimei. But when David was ready to die, he told Solomon to take care of this uh, problem. So this is uh, what Shimei is saying, don't impute iniquity unto me. Um, he's asking for forgiveness from the king. And he's not saying, I have this perennial, perverse way in me. Um, I, I, I made one mistake, and uh, please forgive me for that. Isaiah 21, 3, Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold of me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. So here's a physical picture of something being not going in the right direction. He's bowed down. He's doubled over like um, a woman in labor. And this is the physical picture of what Avon, this perversity, means. Isaiah 24, 1. Behold, Yahweh maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. If you have followed any of the teachings from uh, Psalm 119, the words that mean the way of the Lord, or the words of the Lord, all these words have to do with going forward, and going in a proper direction. So avon and this verb root ava have to do with going in a wrong direction, having doubled back on yourself. Esther 1.16 And Memekin answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in the provinces of King Ahasuerus. The picture is that she was going in a wrong direction. Once you start heading in a wrong direction, you have to make some kind of teshuva, repentance, turn around and go in another direction so that you can be going back in the right way. Otherwise, you are going perversely in a wrong direction, and this is part of the concept of iniquity. The other root, which is constantly translated as iniquity, is aven. The uh, accent shifts. It's with an olive. First Samuel fifteen twenty three. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Here's a similar picture to what happened to the sons of Eli, because they were caught in iniquity. This kind of perverse behavior, where uh, we're not turning around and going back to the way we should, that the rejection from the Father occurs. Job 4.8 Even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. In this word oven, there is an element of uh, somebody actually working to do evil. Here it's uh, considered as plowing. And we know that uh, whatever you sow, you will reap the same. Psalm 7.14 Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. Again, a progression that gives birth to sin, to iniquity. Travaileth, he's actually working to achieve this iniquity. Uh, some other translations of this word, Aven, Job 5, 6, Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground. We know when, when there is iniquity, there will be affliction. Psalm 10, 7, His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. There is an emptiness about this kind of iniquity. It doesn't bring forth anything good. 
Psalm 36, 4. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. So there is a consistent pattern of not hating the things that God himself hates. He's devising something. It's by a deliberate work, and that work is mischief. Psalm 36, 12. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Again, uh, Aven is attached to a concept of a working, of working to do something to, in a direction to achieve something which is against the Torah and the intent of the heart of God. This phrase, workers of iniquity, appears often. Um, there are no workers of foolishness. There are no workers of transgression. There are no workers of sin. The workers are always associated with this concept of iniquity. There is a cognate word for Aven, and that is on, where we uh, pronounce the middle letter as a vowel, and it means strength. Genesis 49.3 Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity, and the excellence of power. The concept of Aven, of iniquity, is associated with the concept of own of power, of working to do something through your own might, your own strength. Isaiah 40, 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. From the concept of working to achieve something, on can also mean goods or belongings, because you have worked to achieve your material wealth. Job 20.10 His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. Hosea 12.8 And Ephraim said, Yet I am become rich, I have found me out substance. In all my labors they shall, not, they shall find none iniquity that is avon in me that were sin. Ephraim is bragging. He's saying, I, I have uh, obviously achieved the good life and I have achieved uh, the sanction of God because I'm rich. This is a very dangerous teaching and a very dangerous concept. Just because we have achieved material wealth or some kind of good life in, the, in this world does not mean that God is on our side or that God has enabled us to achieve these things. If we walk in a righteous way, God has promised to prosper us, but our prosperity does not mean that we have been walking with God. And if Ryan is boasting in the verse before, we find out that he has not been walking with God, but he says, look, I'm rich, and therefore, obviously, I have not done any avon, any iniquity. Uh, this is a false idea. So what is the remedy for iniquity? Proverbs 16.6 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of Yahweh, men depart from evil. Iniquity requires purging. It is a consistent behavior. It is not some slip. It's not a foolish thing. It's not something we did out of ignorance or by accident. It is something that is worked, and it is something that is by our nature continues unless it is purged out of us. And only the fear of Yahweh can make us turn around and do repentance and walk back in a proper direction. Once we start out in a bad direction, without some deliberate intervention on God's part, we will not turn away. Isaiah 42, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of Yahweh's hand double for all her sins. Iniquity requires the pardon of the Father, it requires a covering and atonement. Exodus 28, 38. 
And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their holy gifts. And it shall be always upon his forehead that they may be accepted before Yahweh. It has always been the task, the onus of the priests to carry the iniquity. That is why they make the atonement on Yom Kippur. In other times, when sin requires atonement, this is the task of the priests, and it is the task of our high priest in heaven, as in Titus 2.14. Speaking of Yeshua, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We need not to do the works of iniquity, the works of walking in a perverse path, against the things of Yahweh, where we set our hearts and minds to do things uh, of the flesh, when we begin to do those things, and if we keep walking in that way, it becomes a consistent pattern for us, a pattern of iniquity. And a Yeshua came to redeem us from that, to set us on a right path, that we would be zealous of good works, zealous of the things which Yahweh loves. The next time we'll continue on in this uh, teaching. In the meantime, to Simita Inayim Al Keep your eyes on the sky, your Jemthan draweth nigh. Shalom.